Hey folks, today we're going to the Beachler factory. Should be pretty cool. I get to hang out with my friend uh, Jim Skimanetti again. Uh, I saw him at NAM. Anyway, that's what we're doing today. I'm going to try out some mouthpieces, which will be fun. So it's about an hour, 15 minute drive. I will check in with you when we get there. All right, later. <laughs> Hey folks, so uh, I'm here editing the footage that I took at the Beachler factory, which was super cool. So glad that I got to go up there and hang out. Uh, this is just a lot of clips of me kind of playing the horn, uh, playing uh, three different mouthpieces. Um, I'm going to post a video later of me actually doing uh, the two mouthpieces that I took home on the microphone. Uh, I'll put together a little track to play with. <laughs> Oh, somebody doesn't want to be in here. Uh, he wants to be. The, he wants to be on camera. Um, he wants to not be in this uh, ergo baby. Anyway, uh, and then so these clips in this, I was basically playing in one of their finishing shops, um, where Jim does all of his uh, quality control. Um, so there's a ton of awesome reverb that just is in the room. It's just a big garage, like thirty by thirty. Um, and so what I'm going to do here is put together a track, probably me playing a ballad. Um, playing on top of it, and then, uh, oh, I think it would be cool if you guys voted for which mouthpiece you think I should keep or not. So, I'll do that. Um, in a video coming up soon, I will post actual performances of me. Uh, Mickey, chill. Oh, my wife gave him a man bun, so I don't know how I feel about that. She's gonna want me to get one soon. That was just gonna be, I don't know. All right, anyway, uh... Yeah, let me know your thoughts of uh, these mouthpieces. I really enjoy playing them. All right, later. What's the, uh, what's the story behind that ligature design? Okay, so this is a, you know, a, a, a minimal contact ligature. And this, this was, uh, this was uh, uh, designed like many years before anybody even thought about minimal contact ligatures. They were putting all kinds of... They get your designs, but like uh, it's dead soft brass. It's real soft brass, and then right here you got two bands that go this way, and and by doing it that way, and then there's like three little dimples on the top band and on the lower band. By doing that way, it's like very little contact on on there, gotcha. and uh, so it allows the reed to blow nice and free. Split right down the middle. <laughs> Well, like like some guys will stamp the, the, the table of their mouthpieces 
And so that cre creates a, a, not a good seal on, uh, on, on there. In fact, we stopped doing that. Our real old valve pieces, we, we'd stamp the number on there. Now, now we, we do it over here because we, we don't want the, nothing to interfere with the table. So now we got that solved. And then all the, the major reed companies, uh, Van Dorn and, and uh, Rico, they got a stamping machine. So now they're stamping the reeds. Yeah, yeah, instead of, instead of using ink like what they used to use. And so now they don't seal that good anymore. Yeah, this is a lot better now that it's like the reeds kind of. You got, got you got a nice tone, man. Oh, God, that's yeah, really nice. <laughs>
all of my playtesting. So I got two mouthpieces that I'm going to take home. I have a uh, custom number seven, and then I also have a uh, just the regular number six. Uh, so this will be cool to get a play them on the mic and whatnot in the studio. Um, yeah, I don't have any quick thoughts at the moment, so I'll think about that stuff on my way home and then talk about my experience when I get back to the studio. All right, see you soon. All right, thank you so much for checking that out. Um, if I had to summarize some thoughts. So first of all, that's only uh, that's only me spending like maybe an hour, hour and a half at most with the mouthpieces. Um, so I'm definitely still playing that, playing those pieces the way I uh, play the Durga. And you know that basically every mouthpiece that you play, you kind of grow into it and you learn to adjust here and tongue position to get the most out of the mouthpiece. And that takes a few months. So um, by all means, like this is no true indication of how the mouthpiece sounds because I'm still, I'm doing all of the embouchure uh, placement and tongue placement that I normally do on the Durga that I've been playing for years. Um, I'm not looking at this as a replacement for a Durga, first of all, because the Durga is dope at what it does. Um, one thing I do notice about these pieces is they're really good at that just really intense um, balls to the wall type playing where you're just you just really want to scream on top of uh, whatever you're playing with. So there's a couple spots where I played it really quietly. Um, I'll be honest, like my chops are just out of shape. So I got tired pretty quickly. I think after like 20 or 30 minutes, uh, my face was kind of like, hey, what are you doing? You should stop playing because I uh, my face hurts now. <laughs> um, um, I definitely want to spend more time um trying to play quiet on the mouthpieces um, and just check out, like, what's their dynamic range? Um, what are they really good at? What are they not good at? They feel awesome to play um, as long as you have, like, a really strong, well-developed embouchure. They, and, like, you just kind of have, like, a mature quality with um, your approach to playing the horn. Like, if you, if you, if you've got, like, you know, like, you know how you're trying to sound and you're not just still learning how to play like I wouldn't recommend this piece if you're a brand new player I wouldn't recommend any of these pieces that I've been playing you know like these require like you know you got to put in the time to like really develop your just mental concept of like how to put an embouchure together and put air through the horn um the drive back sucked because it's coming from the valley all the way down to Long Beach <laughs> um the drive up there was a little bit better um, but for the most part, I really enjoyed playing them. I think a lot of that has to do with the, uh, reverberant space that I was playing in, but also the fact that it's really easy to sing on those mouthpieces. Um, you guys know that I've never gotten an overhaul on my horn, and it's got, just like, the pads are basically cardboard at this point, and I still had a really good, uh, I didn't really have many issues with like getting notes to come out, um, considering the state of my horn. So, yeah, um, I had a lot of trouble with their ligatures though. For whatever reason, like they need to be broken in or something. Um, that's my only. That's the only thing I wish was easier to get working immediately was that the ligature. I gotta remember the camera is here. This is where the camera is. I keep looking over here, so. The ligatures on those mouthpieces, until they're broken in, I found them difficult to use. So, that's my only thing that I was like, mm, I wish this was a bit better out of the box. Um, yeah. So, anyway, I'm looking forward to spending more time with it. I hope you dug some of the clips. Uh, let me know in the comments what your preferences are. Um, I did not expect this to become a 20 minute video, but it has turned into that. So that's all good. It's just playing saxophone. Um, anyway, uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments and, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys think. And I'm also looking forward to spending more time with these mouthpieces, 
putting some tracks together and uh, hearing what they sound like on the microphone. Okay, talk to you guys soon. Peace.